Okay, how about checking out this way? I'm here with Santa, the one and only legend from the 802, Mr. Bob Kilburn and his wonderful red sleigh. And he's gonna tell us a little bit about what it's been like racing up here in the 802 and how things have progressed from the asphalt days to the dirt now. Bob, welcome to our show. Good to see you again, Jim. Nice to see you, Bob. Well, you know, on the asphalt, we were green as grass. On the outside of the front row goes the leading rookie here in 2015, driving car number 77J. The Goose Creek Builders, DT Speedy Lube and Car Wash, number 77J from Fairhaven, Vermont, Bob Kilburn. And uh, I learned a lot. I was thankful for that. And uh, um, just the asphalt prior to racing, it, it, it makes you appreciate how technical this race game is and uh, how close these cars are as far as the, the setup and the motors and that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, it taught me a lot. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. When we first started racing, we were uh, not that great, you know, but I was committed to this. Uh, I started at a late age and um, I think the asphalt made me a better dirt racer because it made me understand uh, how to hit your marks, how to be consistent, how to get in the rhythm on the racetrack mm -hmm. and uh, I'm thankful for being on the asphalt up here. Uh, the dirt, um, we raced uh, a different kind of car over to Bradford at Bear Ridge. I'm totally thankful for that but this car right here it's it's a coil car it's a 602 you know crate motor and um, the cars are so close that you have to be on your game constantly because I'm almost 68 years old and I race with 15 years old 15 year olds and 16 year old kids and they're great racers you know so for me I have to be mentally prepared and as physically prepared as I can be but I gotta tell you when I get in that seat I'm 20 years old and I'm Superman again no aches or pains you know so it's it's and getting to learn the race car how it works the setup um, how to prepare your tires how to prepare the car um, and shocks are a big deal and just being ready for the racetrack every week no matter what it brings to you that's what you got to do with having eight wonderful reindeer are pulling this sleigh around every Saturday night are there things you can take away from running the coupe style cars at Bear Ridge and that type of technology that was a learning stone to help you adapt to the running weekly on the dirt with this kind of car? I can. Uh, at Bear Ridge, you're always in traffic. Bear Ridge is a great facility. It, it teaches you how to race in traffic. It teaches you uh, when to lift, when to hit the brake. Um, it also teaches you that the people you race with are great people no matter if I'm at Bear Ridge or at Devil's Bowl it doesn't matter so but up there um, it taught me the do's and the don'ts and it taught me the way the race car reacts to certain things the way it re uh, reacts to the racetrack and you take all that and you put it together and like I said up there you're always in traffic pretty much so you know how to race another racer side by side and be respectful. Um, don't wreck him, don't run into him if you can help it. Bumping and grinding is racing, I understand that. But that's, that's what it did for me. It taught me how to race in traffic, it taught me how to hit my marks, and it just taught me how to be a better racer. You mentioned all these great people that you've raced with in the years gone past, and even people back when you and I first met. Is there any of those names that maybe stick out to you and memories you might have of those drivers? Uh, my first memory at, 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 uh, up here on the asphalt was with Liam Gagnon. Uh, Liam was a great mentor to me. He, uh, he taught me so much and he was a great friend. I didn't know him a long time. You know, he's one of those people like yourself. Um, I wished I'd met 40 years ago so we could have nurtured our friendship throughout that time. Um, but it didn't happen that way, and I'm thankful for the time I did have with him. Um, he was the only guy that would come in my trailer, and I was the only person that he would let in his, other than his close friends like Cody Aubin and a few other guys that and Cody's grandfather that he raced with. But um, as far as a competitor, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call myself an outsider, but Leon taught me so much, and I was so thankful for him. Um, 
that you know and, and Vince VQ2 um, there was just a, a ton of people up here uh, Billy Lucier and, and everybody that helped me because when I bought my first asphalt car I never sat in a modified in my life you know I always run a coupe car over there in, in Bradford so uh, um, everybody that has helped me on this journey and everybody that I have met I'm so thankful for uh, and up at Bradford there was Adam Pearson's uncle Melvin who helped me build my coupe there was Gene Pearson Adam's dad that helped me there was Brian Chafee there was uh, Kevin Chafee there was I mean I could give you a list this long of people up there that 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 would would come by and say you try this you try this or try that anyways it, it was it was um, the people part of this race game is the best part for my wife and myself like yourself um, so uh, it's it's but for Leon up there uh, on the asphalt um, and, and Cody Alvin helped me some and Billy uh, Jason Durgan he helped me a ton uh, you know I'm sure I'm leaving people out but it, it's uh, Vince Vince uh, Junior it, it was all those people that got me to this point to where I am now um, so I'm very thankful for that very thankful for that with all that and our, our time that we both got to know Leon and spend around him what do you think about we take a look back at Leon's career and we'll watch an old race of his right now oh absolutely I'd love it then well, let's do that and we'll come back with Santa Claus in a little bit all right here we go green flag will fly off turn number four we are underway Jason Farman quickly sticks the nose out in front Bob Kilburn battles back on the high side Billy Lucia looking for some place to go Greg Atkins up the inside of Jamie Begor. Kilborn holding up that outside line. Begor thought about three wide. Thought better of it. Begor with a very, very loose race car. Furman out in front. Lucia runs in second. Begor holding things up three deep in the back stretch. Cody Aubin threads the needle between Tremont and Begor. Vince Quinnville being very, very patient, very, very smart as he waits for traffic to give him the openings he needs out in front. Furman, Lucia, Kilburn. Leon Gagno going to work on the high side. Swings around Atkins. Now going after Kilburn. Cody Aubin right there as well, trying to figure out which lane he wants. Drops to the bottom, now slides to the high side. Auburn up the outside of Atkins now. Leon Gagno on the move. Gagno to the high side. Gagno looking for second. Does so with ease. Down the back stretch now, Billy Lucier out in front, Leon Gagno to second. Third is Jason Furman, then it's Kilburn. Battle now for six. Atkins on the bottom in the one. Auburn on the high side in the seven. That is for sixth. Actually for fifth position now, as that's the first battle on the racetrack. Vince Quinnell trying to find some place to go. Oh, the bottom opens up. Tremont slips up. Here comes Quinville to the inside. Tremont slipped right in the middle of one and two. Quinville was there to pounce. Fast race cars mired in the back of this field. Now Proctor able to get clear. Stone able to get clear. Stone's going to set out after Atkins. Stone had his night in the late model cut short. Things did not go the way he wanted them to in that car. Already with a second place finish tonight in the mod. Looking for more. Stone to the outside on Atkins. Atkins gives him plenty of room. Stone going to drive around. Out in front, Leon Gagno to the outside on Billy Lucier. Those two have checked out. 
They are gone, doing battle for the top spot. Third is Jason Furman, great run for him. 77 is Kilburn. Team Snow up pit road in the five. The Snowman heads down pit road as Leon Gagno gets clear of Lucius. Todd Stone works her, uh, Vince Quinneville rather, works over the back of Greg Atkins as Ronnie Proctor right there as well. Todd Stone to the outside on Auburn now. That is a battle for fifth. Stone has had enough, he's headed to the hall. Oh, Stone gets crossed up in turn one. Slides way up the hill, loses the spot, now goes back around Auburn on the high side. He'll set out after Kilburn once again. So Stone had gotten around Auburn, went to work on Kilburn. Car got out from under him. Now Auburn looks to the bottom on Kilburn. Front two are gone, folks. Leon Gagno and Billy Lucia have checked out. Jason Furman third, Kilburn fourth. Todd Stone now to the high side. Rich Quinneville trying to follow him through. Stone now to the bottom on Furman in the 34. That will put Stone into third, Quinneville into fourth, but they have got a long way to go to catch Billy Lucer, Speedy Brissette, heads down pit road in the 23. Front two, a full straightaway separates them. Then another full straightaway back to third. Mitch Quinneville works on Todd Stone. Kenny Tremont has not been able to get anything done. Just cannot move forward in that 115. Quinville looks to the inside on Stone, nothing doing there. Now Quinville looks to the inside again on Stone. Stone able to pull him off of turn number two. Quinville drives it deep into turn number three, nothing to happen. Two veterans. Stone, the heir apparent to the G Stone Motors fortune. Quinneville, a service writer in one of those dealerships. Those two duking it out for the final position on the podium. Stone already with a second place finish tonight. Quinneville with a win already tonight. Leon Gagno, he's in his own zip code, folks. He has checked out. Billy Lucia doing a nice job in second. As he is handling in front of Todd Stone. Those two begging for no cautions. They want this thing to go all the way to lap 50. Gagne puts Rico Hernandez a lap down now. Laura wages for third. Stone's got it. Flying the blue light so his father can see him. His father, Gardner Stone, is here tonight. He is on the property. This time by Leon Gagno. Halfway, 25 down, 25 to go. Kilbert and Proctor now get around Furman. Cody Alvin going to try to follow them through. Quinneville on the bottom, down into turn number three, off of turn number four, Quinneville, that Troyer chassis is rolling, down into turn number one, Quinneville, all crossed up, but able to drive away, oh, what a move, backed it down into turn number one like you would in the dirt, comes to third position, around Todd Stone, Billy Lucia, the next target. Lucia just about a full straightaway out in front as Leon Gagno has put the guy that finished third in the first feature down a lap now. Jimmy Ryan, Joey Roberts, 
championship comfortably his as they run. Quinnabelle, he's going to put Hernandez a lap down now. As he tries to run down Billy Lusher. Lusher playing for no caution. As the lap and the lead has shrunk a bunch. BQ2 is catching Billy Lucia. Really have time, 18 to go, coming up on 17 to go. Leon Gagne mired in heavy traffic. Puts Beagle a lap down, puts Furman a lap down. His next target, Kenny Tremont. Looking at going a lap down. Down the back stretch, Leon Gagno has had things all his own way. Gagno looks to the high side. Nothing doing there on Tremont. Billy Lusher. The gap is shrinking. A car length, maybe two per lap. Lusher running up on lap traffic now. Jimmy Ryan has gone, yo. Puts Kenny Tremont a lap down. So here it is, folks, the battle for second. BQ2 has caught Billy Lusher. Todd Stone runs in fourth. Quinnell, off turn number four. Pulls up within a car, a couple of car lengths of Lusher. Now works to the inside on Jimmy Ryan. to go. Ten laps to go. Quinnell in second. Dispatched with Billy Lucia handily. Todd Stone trying to run Lucia down for third. Final podium finish. What a run for Lucia, though. One of the best of his career. In a big event like this, 50 laps, big money on the line, and Lucia, with seven to go, holds down a podium spot. Stone works to the inside on Furman now. Leon Gagno, once he got out in front, has flat dominated. He is out by a straightaway on Quinnevel with clear racetrack ahead. Quinnevel working through lap traffic. Todd Stone has run down Billy Lucia. That is for third, folks. 
That is the battle for third. Keep in mind, no spotters for these guys. Stone doesn't know what position he's passing for. for Bobby Bigelow. Two sticks high in the air. Gagne with a mile to go. Down the back stretch. He'll come up on Greg Atkins. Right flag is out for Leon Gagne. VQ2, Todd Stone. Off of turn number four, it's all Leon Gagne. Dominates here in feature number two. VQ2 will come home second. Third will go to Billy Lusher. Fourth is Ron Proctor. So Billy Lusher actually fourth, Ron Proctor in fifth. a week ago lost a, a very special friend and racer here at Devil's Bowl Speedway, Leon Gagno. 63 years young, took his final victory lap on Saturday night here. Leon Gagno's name is one that's been printed frequently in the local stock car racing record book since the early 1970s when he stopped on the finish line here at Devil's Bowl on Saturday night to collect the checkered flag after winning the final race of the season. It was nearly routine. He'd done the same thing six times previously this summer between Devil's Bowl and Airborne Park Speedway up in Plattsburgh, New York. Pagano never got to hear the applause this time, and while driving around the fourth turn at the end of his victory lap, he was stricken by an apparent medical emergency. His car, still in motion, bounced off the retaining wall and eventually skidded to stop just a few feet from the victory lane area that awaited its honoree. In the hours following the shocking end of Leon Gagno's life, the Shazy New York native was remembered as a well-loved leader in his sport, seldom outspoken and certainly not one to utter a cross word. His quiet demeanor was his trademark. When he did speak, however, everyone else got quiet and listened to him. He cared for the sport as a whole and often supported changes and ideas that may not have been in his own best interest so long as they benefited the entire group. Overall, Leon's racing career spanned more than 40 years of, su of success at many racetracks in the Northeastern United States and Canada. Much more than just a winner, Leon was a very well-respected and highly regarded member of the local stock car racing community. He was presented with the Devil's Bowl Speedway's highest honor for 2013, the John Bruno Award, which is given annually to someone who has made a significant, significant contribution to short track racing during their lifetime while maintaining high standards of conduct and respect on and off the racetrack. Leon Gagno surely met and far surpassed the awards criteria and was a leader in our community. A sometimes gruff exterior was only the devious disguise for a calm, even-tempered, warm-hearted, insightful man who was as supportive of his competitors and friendly to his fans as he was a lead-footed speedster. Even as he won more than one-third of the races at Devil's Bowl in 2015, the fans never tired, never booed. When it came time for the annual kids' race car rides events, his car always had the most youngsters piled in. When there was a party here at the track, his camping lot, camping lot was always the one with the most people standing around it. Checkered flag in one hand, steering wheel in the other, and with a grandstand full of cheering admirers waiting for him, Leon Gagno's exit from this world was one that race car drivers can only hope for. He left at the very pinnacle of his career and in dominant fashion, winning his final race by half of a lap. We should all be so lucky. I'm very glad we got to spend time watching that race together, you and I. Do you have a Leon story you'd like to share with us? I do. Us? There was a night up there, he came to me and he said, uh, have you got a spare right rear tire you can, you can let me use? And I'm going. He comes in the trailer and he looks around and he goes, 
well, how big is it got to be to start with, you know? And I said, well, there's one right there. And so he takes it over to his trailer. It's the right, the right size. He dismounts it, puts it on his wheel, and uh, he ran it the next night at Airborne because we were racing Friday nights then. And he won his heat, he won the semi, and he won his feature with that tire. So he comes back to me the next week and he goes, what do I owe you for that tire? I said, you don't owe me nothing. He goes, what? I says, you don't owe me nothing, Lee. And I said, just your help and your friendship. I said, that's priceless to me. I said, so don't worry about the tire. Well, you know, he was telling everybody that he used my tire to win those three races. Said, well, it was his tire because I gave it to him. So, you know, that, that, that part of Leon, I don't know, is a lot of people knew. Um, but I, I sure did, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's one story that I'll take with me forever because, you know, I helped him and he helps me. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know, a lot of times at the racetrack, we get into a problem with an individual that we're racing with. Um, if I do that, I'd like to settle it. But if that guy came to me and said, do you have a universal joint or do you have a yoke or do you have whatever, you know, a, a, a tie rod, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm going to give him that because I want him to be able to be on the racetrack. That's just the way I am. So Leon was, uh, Leon was awful special to me. You no, know, Leon was special to a lot of us, and I think that's what helps his legacy is going to be in the, the biggest legends of Northeast Racing oh, Series that we ever had in our absolutely. area. And absolutely. he's definitely a gentleman. The short time I got to him, I'll never forget him and, and what he contributed just to what I did. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, you know, very, very fortunate. And after, you know, he, he I got to tell you this real quick, too. Our first meeting of Leon, we, we had bought the asphalt car and we went to the banquet that winter and Justin St. Louis who was coordinating the banquet he set it up so that we sat my wife Chris and I sat with Leon and his crew of course they didn't know us from Adam you know and they were the nicest people they just Leon and his crew just accepted us we talked you know and and, and I was kind of hoping that he would you know kind of guide me or shed some light on me as to which way to go and what to do if I had a problem blah 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 and he did you know and I think from that first meeting at the banquet dinner I think that's what did it for us, for my wife and myself. So, uh, God bless him. I just, uh, I can't thank him enough, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Things from the 802 and what's going on in, in the history and look a little bit back. And I remember from early days, you had some special folks that used to pit around your car and your pit area. And a very good friend, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. And... Uh, what can Santa tell us about uh, Mr. Fitzgerald and the naughty nice list and where, uh, where's Scotty nowadays? Well, Scott, when we first met Scott, he immediately called me dad and my wife mom. So um, Scotty is very close to right here with us. Um, uh, Scotty has uh, some health issues now, but that's, we don't want to go into that. Yeah, but anyways, uh, yeah, he, uh, he helped me a ton too on the dirt because he was... Uh, I think he started in the limited the same year that I did with this. And uh, him and I would talk, we would call one another, um, and we just, we were family, we still are. Mm. You know, and his son Andrew, the, the whole the whole crew, everybody. And um, it's, uh, with Scott, it's, uh, we were always joking and, and, and doing this and doing that. And, uh, um, but he's uh, he's a great person and he's, he's fighting a major battle, but uh, uh, he's gonna win this battle and uh but we would we were pitting next to one another and you know we would we would yell back and forth or joke and, and it, it would just lighten the mood of the of the race night because you know as well as i do when we get in these things we're all business you know and even though i was we, scott and i were racing against one another um we were family in and out of these things so uh, if he needed something or i needed something you know it doesn't matter uh, we would always give what we could to help that guy continue into the race so that he could be in it you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. but uh I, I see scotty um frequently uh, i try to see him as many times as i can uh over a course of, of a period of, of months or weeks or whatever and um uh, uh since he had to stop racing i haven't seen him as much because he's going through some stuff but i like i said i see him whenever i can and uh he, he's just he's still the same scott he was fun then 
and he's fun now. So, uh, but there were, you know, there was stuff we would, we would pull on one another in the pits and, and just, just have a good time at it before we got in the race cars. So that's, for Scott, for us, um, he is family to us and his family is family. He's very dear to us. Um, and he, he was a great racer. He won championships here uh, on the asphalt and, and, and on the dirt. And uh, his son, Andrew, is, is, is a good person and, and they're just great people. So I'm very, we're, my wife and myself, we're very thankful to have Scott and his family in our lives. Santa, if we were to look at your naughty nice list right now, the fans of the 5VT, have they been naughty or nice? The 5VT, he's at the top of the nice list. I think we should watch one of his wins together. What do you think? I think we should too. All right, Dan, we're going to send it back to you in the studio and we're going to watch a little bit of Scott Fitzgerald in the 5VT race in the 802. We'll see you in a little bit. Green flag in the air. Scott Fisher trying to take the lead again. Big Daddy getting pushed down to the, the inside of the track. Scott Fisher is going to take the lead. The 11 New York at Jimmy Bushy. Now he's going to work on second place from Big, Big Daddy in the 69. Just about neck and neck as they enter the front straightaway here. Scott Fisher working on getting a strong lead. He just about does on the front straightaway. Single file almost, all the way through the field as the 11 New York at Jimmy Bushy is going to head back down to go neck and neck with the well man, Robert Gordon. Scott Fischel still has a strong lead over the 69, Big Daddy John Franklin. Behind him, now just about on his bumper, the H2O of Robert Gordon, the well man, followed by the 11 New York at Jimmy Bushy. Scott Fitzgerald got a strong lead over the rest of the field. The well man getting a little sideways but gets himself back on track. Working on Big Daddy, Don Franklin. H2O set to pass him, but I don't think Big Daddy's gonna allow that tonight. Just about single foul all the way down. The 69 trying to pull away from the well man. As the 11 New York, Jimmy Bushy working on the well man, Robert Gordon. Robert Gordon's gonna pull out of that situation and keep working on Big Daddy Don Franklin in the 69. Jimmy Bushy not giving up. Trying to put everything he's got into the race car. H2O, Robert Gordon on the tires of the 69. Big Daddy Don Franklin still not willing to give up that position. H2O side by side with a 69 goes to make the pass. Neck and neck on the first straightaway, bumps into the wall, get themselves back on track, still neck and neck. H2O is still putting everything he's got into that race car, just about into second position. He can almost taste it, but the 69 at Don Franklin is not giving up yet. A little bit of sideways from the H2O, that's going to help him take second position. Don Franklin not giving up yet. Still working all over the tail of this, the H2O. Not ready to give up that position yet. Scott Fitzgerald still out by himself out in front. Followed by the H2O of the well man, Robert Gordon. The 69, Big Daddy Don Franklin in third. In fourth, the 11 New York of Jimmy Bushy. Fifth, the nine of Jared Blake. Field, single, the whole field is single file, just about spread out with three or four car lengths between each of them. The well man, Robert Gordon, has got his sights set on the five of Scott Fitzgerald. Scott still has an impressive lead over the rest of the field. Robert Gordon and the H2O is going to try and change that. Single file all the way down the field. The 58 of Tony Salerno falling behind a little bit. H2O, Robert Gordon, the well man, catching up to the five of Scott Fitzgerald. Still single file all the way down the field. A 
About four laps to go. Three this time by. Scott Fitzgerald still out in front, but the well man, Robert Gordon, still working hard to get that first position. Big Daddy Don Franklin in the 69. Still holding up third place. H2O Robert Gordon still working on the number five, but not getting very far. Chief starter Bobby Bigelow gives him the two to go sign. Robert Gordon still has his sights set on the number five of Scott Fitzgerald. Scott Fitzgerald is not ready to give up that first position. He wants to take home the beautiful piece of slate. White flag is in the air for Scott, followed by Robert Gordon still trying to catch up. Big Daddy Don Franklin in the 69. 11 New York of Jimmy Bushy, 9 of Jared Blake, and the 58 of Tony Salerno. Ladies and gentlemen, the H2O's tires are glowing, but it's not going to be enough. Oh my goodness, oh! Scott Fitzgerald takes on the win, followed by the H2O of Robert Gordon, the 69 of Big, Big Daddy Don Franklin, the 11 New York of Jimmy Bushy, the 9 of Jared Blake, and the 58 of Tony Salerno. We're going to head down to Victory Lane now. Scott Fitzgerald in the number five. York Mount Auto. Followed by the well man, H2O of Robert Gordon. It's not up there. You gotta go to the pit tower to do it. Yep. What's that? First career win for Scott Fitzgerald in the number five, taking his victory lap. Finally, for Scott Fitzgerald. The H2O of Robert Gordon, the well man. Scott Fitzgerald coming back down to the front straightaway. First career win. Number five, Scott Fitzgerald in the Yorkmont. Bobby Bigelow is going to get him right back into position. Scott Fitzgerald will receive the beautiful piece of slate from Brown's Cory Slate in Castleton. Yeah, baby. Scott Fitzgerald set the climb out of his race car for his first career win, the number five, Yorkmont Auto Auctions. Scott Fitzgerald set to climb out. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. First goal of the Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> Scott Fitzgerald, get over here. Come on. Your first crew will win. Tell me what you think right now. Well, I gotta, I gotta tell you, it's not my first career win. First career win on asphalt. Gotcha. Okay. 21 years it's been since a win. It's great. <laughs> We've worked so hard for this. You know, these guys behind me, each and every week, I'll tell you, I'm gonna get choked up and somebody else is gonna have to talk, but we work really hard for this and I can't thank all of them enough. I mean, they're just great. H2O Robert Gordon is getting pretty close at any point. Were you nervous at all about him? Well, no, I was, you know, I was trying to watch him here, trying not to let him too close, but, you know, it's, he, he, Robbie's, Robbie's the best of the best. He races you clean, he races you hard. You know when you get out in front, you got to go because he's going to come looking for you. So, 
you know, my hat's off to him. I saw he was reeling us in. You know, we've been trying and trying, and I guess all I can say is, who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Anyone else you want to thank tonight? Yes, I, I want to thank Charlie Brown. You know, he was a, a driver back when I was a kid. I remember watching him. One of the fan favorites, definitely one of my favorites. Him and his crew for uh, for sponsoring this great. I got to thank my sponsors, and I'll forget half of them, so just read the car. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Fitzgerald, give him a round of applause. My crew members are, uh, are Austin, who's a 15-year-old high school boy who helps me. Very good help. Bethany Sprague, Austin Adams, Bethany Sprague, and Chris Sprague. They're a married couple. They've been with me since I started. Chris Lucier, who's Billy Lucier's dad. And Donald Rivers, who's up there every week. He camps up there. He's a, he's a mechanic in Rutland at a tire dealership. And a young man by the name of Grayson. He's, uh, he's out of Maine. Uh, at five years old, he lost both his kidneys. And he had a kidney transplant this year. And we are in touch with them. They're a great family. We sent him, we've sent him t-shirts and mugs and he's just a great kid and he wants to, he wants to come here to the races so hopefully we can make that happen. Um, Fred Cook, um, he's another great help. He, uh, he runs his own car when he can. He, uh, Tanner Siemens drives for him. He races up here. Uh, Joe Kemp. Joey is a guy I worked for who run uh, modifieds and uh, other race cars. He raced at Bear Ridge in a four-cylinder and, uh, and, uh, and he's raced up here in a modified. Uh, Kevin Blanchard, who helps me most of the time, he's, he's, uh, he's with me most of the time, Kevin is, and my wife Christina. And Vern Woodard. Vern Woodard runs a mini sprint along with Joe. Joe runs one occasionally. And a young lady by the name of Michaela Warren. She uh, adopted us this year. Uh, She's, she's around, she's great help, she's a great kid. So those are my people, and I'm very thankful for them, and I can't thank them enough. Now Santa, you've granted so many people wishes just in the racing community along with your presence and your goodwill. And I could grant you a wish right now. Amongst racers and in the pits, um, I would like to see, uh, not that you're gonna be best friends, but I know with me in the race car, if I have to lift and not run into somebody, I'm going to do it. Or if I have to use the pedal on the left, I'm going to do it. Even though it may set me back and I may not get a win or I may not get a top five or a top three, I'm good with that because I know here that I've done the right thing. And I'm not faulting anybody. I'm not saying there's a lot of disrespect out there. I'm not saying anything like that. All I'm saying is us as racers, we have to look out for us because a lot of guys don't look at it this way. Um, when we get in these race cars, we are the poster children for this sport. Okay, People don't think like that. I do. I'm not going to do something to endanger, or not I shouldn't say endanger, to make the sport look bad or make myself look bad. Because I've got kids, Jim, hundreds of them, that for whatever reason, look up to me, and I'm thankful for that. But us as drivers, no matter who we race for or what division we race in, we are the poster children of this sport. In short track dirt racing, as far as I'm concerned, in, in the Northeast or wherever, in the East, wherever you go, is probably one of the most family-oriented sports that you'll find anywhere. So because there's people in this sport that wives, mothers, fathers, grandparents, children, aunts, uncles, nephews, whoever, you know, they go to the races to see their family member race, all right? So that's, that's one thing. And I'd like to say this too. I'd like to say, as, as I was talking with somebody earlier, I'd like to see, and I'm by no means a, no means a genius, I'd like to see the promoters not that they're doing anything wrong, get a rules package across the board, where is if I want to go race somewhere, I don't have to change my tires, or I don't have to do certain things to the car to go race at 
XYZ Speedway over here when I came from A, A and B Speedway over over there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, that's and that's another thing I'd like to see. I'd like to see um, the rules package for us low buck guys. I'm going to call us low buck guys for the most part. You know, we, we don't race the the, the 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 series, the short track series, and, and uh, whatever. But um, my wife and I are the sole sponsor of this car, with the exception of a good friend, and. It's and and the auto supplier that I work for part time, but it's it's a thing where um, number one we have to be mindful of what we're doing in the race car and in the pits, and number two, the the promoter and I'm not telling them I know their jobs, but it would just it would be nice if the rules package across the board would level the would level the playing field out so that we didn't have to, you know, if I wanted to go race wherever I wouldn't have to change this car to go do it. Um, and one more thing I'd like to say, uh, I want to thank the guys I race with. Um, they afford me the opportunity to be competitive at the same time and be respectful and race with people um, that I know I can race with. So I want to thank those guys in the limited division at Devil's Bowl. Uh, it means a great deal to me. I know I'm the oldest guy in a modified up there. Um, I can pretty much hold my own, for the most part, <laughs> but uh, uh, I just want to thank those guys um, for, uh, for racing with me and racing with me the way they do, so thank you guys, I appreciate it.